Our next speaker is Andrew Tyler, who is Director of Animal Aid. Please welcome Andrew Tyler. Thank you, Andre. I have to hope I don't fall off this thing. Um, it's lovely to see everyone here. And it's lovely to have Kay's help uh, to hold my nose, because with my tremor, I might chuck them all over the place, which wouldn't do, would it? Um, so thank you, Kay. Uh, yes, like a lot of people, my health is not 100%. But that doesn't mean I want animals to suffer on my behalf. None of us are so important, either as individuals or as members, members of a species, that animals should be tormented and killed in labs with the intention of us gaining advantage. But of course we don't gain, we don't benefit, because as Andrew just said, the animals' data obtained from safety testing and disease research is junk. It doesn't help human medicine advance. That's why the question so often put to us by pro-vivid sectors, usually with their chest out with an air of triumph, is such a dud. You know the one. But you're a hypocrite because you use drugs that are tested on animals. Well, the answer to that is simple. All mainstream drugs are tested on animals, both the ones that are useful to people and the ones that maim and kill. We've just heard about TGen 1412, which passed the animal test. Vioxx passed the animal test. There are any number of drugs that shrunk tumors and repaired stroke damage in mice that failed when they were put into people. And there are any number of vaccines that protected monkeys and even chimpanzees from AIDS. And then went on to have catastrophic impact in people. If a drug does prove useful in people, if it does limit disease, it's despite the fact that it was tested on animals, not because. times. I'd say about every 10 days or two weeks I get, through my email account, news of a breakthrough development of a non-animal method of disease research, testing, um, drug development, you know the sort of thing, robotics, uh, DNA chips, imaging machines, etc. And at the strategic level, it's happening as well, because three absolutely key U.S. federal agencies uh, are embarked on a course, a major development course. The, the director of one of the agencies, the National Institutes of Health, said marks the beginning of the end of the use of animals for safety testing. This is the most powerful federal research agency in the world, the director of that agency saying we're now seeing the end of animal testing for, for, for um, potentially damaging products.
But meanwhile in Europe, the law governing vivisection is being rewritten. 86609, I'm sure plenty of you know about this, it's the directive that governs vivisection in this country and across the whole of the EU, it's being rewritten. And it is, I'm afraid to say, a deeply dispiriting business, deeply dispiriting. Because the MEPs, with a few honourable exceptions, are getting set to reduce the meagre protection that animals currently, I won't say enjoy, have under the current regime. They're getting ready to sabotage a ban on the use of primates that the whole of the European public wants to see. They're getting ready to sabotage that. And they're getting ready to increase the legal level. We know that animals suffer degrees of torment that are not recorded properly, but they're getting ready to increase the formal le legal level that animals can suffer to prolonged, severe suffering. That's what they want in the statute. Animals can be subjected to prolonged, severe suffering. I mean, what is wrong with these people? These are our representatives. And you know why they're doing it? Because industry and academic sector uh, lobbyists have been bending their ear. They've been putting pressure on them. They've probably been bribing them. Money. These PS money, someone said. But, um, you know, these amoral hacks who cling to a past that has no meaning for anyone except themselves, self-interested. Now, the lobbyists are not getting it their own way entirely. They don't go uncontested. Animal Aid working alongside uh, a number of national anti-vivisection groups, both in this country and in Europe, are working hard to limit the damage these lobbyists and these MEPs are set to impose. We're working uh, in the UK and Strasbourg and Brussels. And I do have to give credit to Animal Defenders International, in particular, and Dr. Hadwin Trust, well, I don't know if you appreciate, their team of research, their team of lobbyists are flying back and forth or going by train, non-stop, banging on doors, trying to knock some sense into these MEPs. It's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard task. <laughs> But beyond that, we've all got to dust ourselves down because we've had a hard time as a movement, as someone said. We've been, our reputation has been trashed. We're being talked as if, as if we're maniacs. We've got to dust ourselves down, muster all the energy and confidence we can, not just to make the lives and deaths of animals in labs less awful, but join in the big fight to end the whole thing for all time. We can't give up on that objective. That is our objective. And we've got to remember, whatever the fix, whatever the fix opinion polls, the RDS, the pro-lobbyists, uh, the pro vivisectors sectors do, but they ask fixed questions. A recent poll conducted across six European countries in February and March found that the vast majority of people in those six countries, which represents the whole of Europe, don't want to see animals suffering mad. They don't want to see it. So we've got to mobilise that powerful sentiment. We've got to mobilise that powerful sentiment. And we've got to remember, we've got to pat ourselves on the back and say, ours is an honest and moral cause movement. You know, and we're not going to be stopped. We're not going to be stopped by a corrupt political class. By a police force, or by an unjust judiciary. Thank you. Keep up the faith and thank the government.